First up this week, water on Mars. Now, we already knew that there's water on Mars, but data from the Curiosity rover this week suggests there is a surprising amount in the soil there. According to the scientists involved, Martian soil is about 2% water by weight. This is huge news for any future colonists because it means that they should be able to extract all the water they need directly from the soil rather than having to worry about transporting it over long distances. A research team in Korea successfully genetically engineered E. coli to produce short chain alkanes of gasoline. Yes, you heard that right. Bacteria that can produce gas. Scientists have previously engineered bacteria to produce diesel and now they've managed it with gasoline too. This is absolutely nowhere near viable for mass production at the moment, but as concern about limited fossil fuels grows, research into renewable technologies will become more and more important. Who knows, maybe someday a car will run on bacteria produced gas. Scientists have discovered the first ever evidence of whispering in non-human primates. Contot tamarins in a zoo appeared to fall silent when a keeper they disliked entered their enclosure. However, recordings later showed they had simply lowered their voices. The amplitude was only reduced when they were in the presence of this particular keeper, indicating that they used these vocalizations to communicate. A new fossil was announced this week, the earliest known animal with a jaw and a backbone. It was a type of placoderm that lived around 419 million years ago, and it's the closest thing we know to the ancestor of all modern animals with a jaw and a backbone, including us. Until now, it was thought that modern bony skeleton animals, like us, evolved from an ancestral fish that had a cartilage skeleton, like modern sharks, skates and rays. This find suggests the opposite, that a bony skeleton is the vertebrate prototype, and that modern fish with a cartilage skeleton must have lost theirs somewhere in their evolutionary history. The 32-year-old man has become the very first person to be fitted with a mind-controlled bionic leg. The artificial limb uses neurosignals from his upper leg to control the prosthetic knee and ankle. The cost has yet to be determined, but the scientists involved hope that the technology could be made available to more than 1 million Americans with leg amputations in the next 3 to 5 years. Researchers use lasers to accelerate electrons at a rate 10 times faster than conventional technology in a glass chip smaller than a grain of rice. This could eventually lead to compact particle accelerators that could be used in medical imaging and therapy, as well as in particle physics. At full potential, this technique could match the accelerating power of the SLAC's two mile long linear accelerator in just 100 feet, and deliver more than a million more electron pulses per second. Finally, my bizarre science story of the week. A UK firm unveiled a plant called the Tom Tato, a plant that produces both tomatoes and potatoes at the same time on the same plant. Now, according to the firm, this plant wasn't genetically engineered. It was instead produced using a technique called grafting. Tomatoes and potatoes belong to the same genus, making this process much easier. This isn't the first time this has ever been tried, but previous attempts have led to the tomatoes and potatoes taking on each other's flavors, which obviously isn't very marketable because nobody wants to eat a potato flavored tomato. We well, might do, I don't know, you might be weird people. But the agricultural firms say they've solved these problems and that the tomatoes are even tastier than normal varieties. So, will you be growing a tomato in your garden? Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next week.